This week's episode is brought to you by Netflix. Jumping into your first startup, what software should you use? I'm Jay Adelson, and I'm the founder and chairman of Revision 3. I've started and built a number of companies. My goal in this show is to pass on some of the knowledge from my experiences to you, the budding entrepreneurs, and hopefully leave you with some words of wisdom. Today's question comes from Tim who asks, I just started a small company. What kinds of software or other resources would you recommend to help keep a business on track? Tim, your mileage may vary depending on what kind of business you're starting, but there are some common truths amongst all businesses which I think are true. Remember that businesses always have, uh, you know, as part of their process, a legal component. And so one of the first things that I would strongly recommend you do is come up with some kind of filing mecha mechanism. I like using Dropbox for this, for all of the legal paperwork that's going to be coming in and out of your business. Scan everything, keep your hard copies in a drawer somewhere, but make sure that this is secured and accessible by you and your attorneys or any other partners that are gonna to wanna to get into this. It has been so much smoother starting companies since the advent of these cloud services for me that I strongly recommend you start with something as simple as Dropbox. Um, moving on to other areas though, I know that HR seems like something that should be, you should wait until you've got 50 employees and it's not a big deal, but I strongly recommend to all new entrepreneurs who are starting a company and actually doing their first hires, to definitely invest in some kind of outsource HR system. I know that um, I've done this through cloud services, um, through a number of different companies over the past. Most recently, I think at Simple Geo, we were using Trinet, but there are a number of software packages you can look for, um, you know, health benefits, where you can set up all of the employee health plans, sometimes set up payroll through these systems, um, and so forth, that is something that is definitely worth investing in early and will help you recruit some of your first employees that you've got that all locked down. Speaking of payroll, payroll is an extremely important service. You've got to make sure you get this right, all of your workers comp down, all that. Ask your attorneys for help getting all the initial pieces set up, but for payroll, I strongly recommend if you can't integrate it with a health benefit type cloud service provider, work with somebody like ADP or Paychex. I know it's a little, it seems a little pricey at first, but it's worth every penny you pay for to make sure that your employees actually get paid properly. And they have great programs for the small, tiny business at the initial stages to help you get started. Revision 3, DIG, and so forth, I set all of this up myself. And believe me, I am not an accountant. And so if I can do it, you can do it, all right? Now as far as financials are concerned, this is kind of a tricky thing. I, I do talk to a lot of folks who uh, set up QuickBooks for their initial business. Uh, and that's a great idea. However, there's one key piece that you have to remember before setting up QuickBooks. You have to have someone who knows how to use QuickBooks in order to set up QuickBooks. It sounds like, oh, my, all of my finances are gonna be handled by these financial software programs. No, they won't. You do need someone who understands it. And at the initial stages of a business, it probably doesn't make sense to have a full-time accountant. So outsource it. Find someone, find a CPA, find someone out there or a service. I know um, at Simple Geo when we started, we used Accretive, but there's companies like that who you can outsource to, who then will also set up QuickBooks for you or use their own software in order to manage your books and make sure your accounts receivable, accounts payable are managed. Anyway, in a minute, I'll talk a little bit more about some software you may not have expected to be helpful at the initial stage of your business, but first, let's go to our sponsors. This week's episode is brought to you by Netflix. With more than 23 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service instantly streaming TV episodes and movies. Members can instantly watch thousands of titles on a vast array of devices, streaming TV episodes and movies onto Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PS3 game console, and even the Nintendo Wii console. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you can instantly watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want, for one low monthly price. There are no late fees or due dates. For a limited time, as a new member and an Ask J viewer, you can get a free 30-day trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash askj and sign up, and be sure to use this URL so they know we sent you. Netflix is now available in the UK and Ireland. Our viewers there can get the same free trial as in the US. Just check out netflix.co.uk slash askj 
or netflix.ie slash askj. All right, so you're starting your business and you're trying to figure out software to help you organize stuff. And, and I'll tell you, there are some incredible uh, new software packages out there. One of them which immediately comes to mind for software developers is something that a friend of mine set up called Sprintly. Um, Sprintly is, for anyone who's doing agile development, it's not just software development, it's actually a project management system that you should definitely check out if you have a chance. There are a number of products in this space of actually helping you organize tasks. Um, things around help desks, for example. I can just list, I mean, I'm just thinking of all the different co competitive help desk programs out there. Just do a Google search on help desk and you'll see them all. I strongly recommend that you consider working with someone in that space. And then, you know, that's your support process. Let's not forget about IT. Your employees want to obviously have the same services in terms of email and collaboration that any large company has. Fortunately for you, Google has done all of the hard work and has provided a very good set of resources with the Google Docs product. And uh, you know, as far as collaboration is concerned, yes, there are issues and there are issues with the email, but even if you have employees that for whatever reason like to use um, you know, their own email like Apple Mail or Thunderbird, Google supports that. It supports your domain so your brand stays intact so everyone sees emails coming from uh, your domain name. And also it does a lot of good tracking in terms of version control. So as you move through versions of documents or spreadsheets, it's been very, very helpful to me. Microsoft has also products in this space. Their 360 product you know, is, is making some headway and I've actually um, talked to a few startup guys in my space who have been using it very successfully. And so you might also check out those products if you're a Microsoft guy. And you know, I think you'll be very happy with that as well. Anyway, um, so I think in general, software, it's something that's gonna be changing. So the, my final recommendation here is don't stop doing your research on what those products might be because tomorrow or by the time you see this episode, there might be an even better software as a service or SaaS product out there that helps you get your startup off the ground. Thanks for joining us on today's episode. Remember, send your questions to askj at revision3.com. I love to see those questions. I love the video questions posted to youtube.com slash jadelson, um, or ask Jay Adelson rather. And then also follow me at, at jadelson on Twitter. Again, thanks for joining us and until next time.